Hello everyone, today we've got a super quick video for War and Order. In this video I'm going to go through 11 quick tips for beginners in War and Order. So that's you beginning on a brand new realm, what should you be doing, what should you not be doing, and what do you need to get done, and what should you avoid in your first, I'd say about month in the game, is where I'm at just now. But uh, let's get right into it. So first off, you want to make sure that you never set at 100 stamina that's this icon at the top left here current stamina for me is sitting at 46 and you can use potions to get that up but um early game you probably don't want to do that until you get up to a bit, a bit higher levels so you can get better rewards basically the ways to spend stamina is to be attacking monsters right now all, all my troops are out farming and um, which is i guess another tip 1.5 <laughs> um get your troops out farming but go attack monsters you can use this little button here to look for monsters at your level. Um, you, for the most part, want to only focus on monsters um, which say that you're having a winning edge. Okay, tip number two, learn when to spend your resources and speed ups. Now this is different for two types of players. There's two types of players here that I wanna talk about. One is alliance leaders and spenders. The other is alliance members so alliance leaders they have a responsibility to get their alliance up as fast as possible and get it to a high rank and um, make it appealing to new members so you want to be spending from the very start you want to spend your resources and upgrades where you can um, to get that early head start and make your alliance appealing to you for regular members though at about two weeks into the server length and again at four weeks there's an event called strongest lord Strongest Lord lets you spend speed ups and resources in order to get your rank up in the event. Right now I'm on Galar Resources which is phase 3 and you, you as a member probably want to be spending your speed ups at this time rather than at the very start because that way you've got a chance to you know feel out the server and um, see if it's the right server for you and then you can invest in the game properly. One thing I will note is that you should probably always buy the Eternal Build Pack, otherwise you're just gonna fall behind. That Eternal Build Pack is the thing that lets you build two uh, buildings at the same time in your castle. Tip number three is do your daily missions. If you go here, you click daily reward, you see a bunch of stuff that you can do to unlock the final prize. You should be doing this every single day. That is a lot of rewards just in that one box alone, but you get resources, you get other things in all of these other boxes. Make sure you do it every day. But on top of those daily missions, there's other daily things you should be doing. You can con conjure three times per day. You can come over to this um, star ru ruins, click, click in here, you can challenge the beast and then um, occupy a mine and then you get these rewards uh, you get rewards from this every 5 to 20 minutes it, it goes up over time and there's a lot of stuff to do every day you got your pinatas you've got um, your other events make sure you're doing everything that's on screen until it's all clear every single day tip number four find the right alliance now finding the right alliance is not an easy thing to do because normally at the start you've got a bunch of alliances boosting up to try and be appealing to other alliances and sometimes those don't really go well. Our, our server is a very good example. The top alliance was an alliance called Phoenix. They unfortunately collapsed, their leader turned out to be a seller and their alliance is just dead now. Each alliance is going to have its own um, personality and focused time zone for us concord we're always european uh focused time zone we've got a little bit asian uh, leaning side um but european and asian is us and our philosophy for the server is that the realm comes first we look after the realm not just our alliance whereas phoenix before they just cared about getting us big as possible as quick as possible they were raiding everyone and that's what a bsg down here they do they they just raid everyone they can and get as much resources as they can and you can see that they're not progressing as fast as us in a time that we've got 20 million power they've only got 3 million power um since about three days ago when strongest lord started tip number five is build your defense golems now a lot of people don't actually know about this but if you click on the castle here you've got a recruit button and here you have defense golems they give you lots of bonuses when defending and they're essentially free troops that you can use to, to defend your castle 
Now, normally people don't raid castles that have defense golems up. You don't want to be building golems on your farms, but on your main castle, make sure to get the max golems up. And then in your research, get the research for that golem up. Tip number six, that is recruiting of tier two cavalry. Now, why tier two cavalry? Why are tier two cavalry so important? Why am I a month into the game with unlocked tier nines, tier eights, and I'm building tier two cavalry? Why is that? Well, if we go and look here, we see the load of tier two cavalry is very high compared to pretty much everything else up until you, you start upgrading it. But it's also extremely, extremely cheap. Here, I'll speed this up just to show you how cheap these things are. Look at that, very cheap to build one of these. And why do you wanna use these? These are gonna be your farmers. Every time you go out to gather, you wanna send out your tier two cavalry. And that's because if they get hit, you don't really care if they die. It's okay if they die. They're just there to make sure that your main army can stay defending your castle and you can send something cheap out to go and mine your resources for you. And because they've got such a high load capacity, you're not spending, you, you, for example, by default, when you go to gather resources, it will default to your uh, strongest load. And some of those might be higher to your cavalry, cavalry or whatever. You don't want to be risking those out. Or maybe it's archers. They, they just don't have as much load as the tier two cavalry. Make sure you're sending those out. Tip number seven is focus on only one beast. Now, I'm surprised to hear that people end up switching their beasts. You should not be switching what beast you're on. You should be focusing only one beast. The amount of speed ups, uh, sorry, XP that you get is limited. So make sure you're only focusing one beast. You wanna be leveling up their abilities. You wanna be leveling up the, the beast itself by using all of your XP. That's why there's a use all button. There's not use individually button and uh, evolving it when whenever you can. And once you get the talents unlocked, obviously upgrade those as well. Tip number eight is focus your troops. So what you want to be doing is there's two doctrines of troops that you want. You want to always have a front line and you want to always have a back line. And that's for when you're doing solo stuff. For uh, big group battles, you might want to only invest your archers because someone else might have a better defense, for example. But for your castle and your attacking monsters and stuff, you want to have one front line and one back line. So you don't want to go infantry and cavalry. You want one or the other. And the two groups that um, normally come about from these, just mainly because of how research and other bonuses, artifacts and stuff go, is you're going to be choosing from either inventory and mages or cavalry and archers. Um, and that's, again, just because of how the bonuses go. Now, normally what people do, the, the most popular is infantry and mages, and that's because mages do a high amount of damage, and infantry are very good at defense, so they instantly appeal to people. For more aggressive players, you probably want to go cavalry and uh, archers, but that's because you've got a, a bonus when you're on the attacking side for uh, your cavalry. Um, but also, you need to have a, a good mix of all of them for your alliance, because there's events in the game that require specific troops to get specific bonuses. So you wanna have a nice balance in your alliance. Personally, if you're on edge, I recommend going archers and cavalry because you know that majority are already gonna go infantry and mages and your alliance is gonna be in need for some archers and cavalry. Tip number nine is you need to know that the kill event comes in Strongest Lord three. That's about a month and a half into the server lifetime. I think it's uh, six weeks into the server lifetime, six or six to eight weeks. Um, and you need to be prepared for it. So by that, I mean Strongest Lord 2 is probably when you want to be building up your troops, have a decent amount of troops ready to defend not just yourself, but your allies. And after Strongest Lord 2, that is when you should be focusing on upgrading your medic tents because if you, at least if you're a spender, you're probably going to be needing that extra um, capacity in your hospital for all those troops that you made in Strongest Lord 2. Now I'm playing a bit risky, I probably should have these at higher level already, um, but I'd, I just don't think anyone's going to attack me as a leader of the Strongest Alliance, um, but maybe that's a bit co too cocky. Um, you should also be upgrading your hospital, that obviously gives a huge upgrade as well. Um, 
and just make sure that you stay under the troop capacity uh, or the hospital capacity for Strongest Lord Free if you're not in one of the top alliances that can defend themselves against these kill alliances, the ones that are here only to get kills. So here we are, tip number 10. You want to clear the elite mines for your alliance. Don't be part of the problem. Help your alliance clear elite mines. So we we'll go instantly into my alliance elite mines and you'll see straight away this level four refinery has zero people on it. And the reason why that is, is because it's so close to being done. And no one wants to send out any troops that are only gonna be there for five to 20 minutes, right? They wanna send out troops and not have to worry about it for up to nine hours right so if you're active in the game and you know that you can be on in another hour or so go clear these mines that's what i that's what i tend to do whenever i'm um know that i'm going to be active through the day or uh, just whenever i'm not sleeping i only go out to the big ones when i'm sleeping uh, right now we've got none that are uh, got a big amount so we're just clearing them all up and the reason for that is it takes a long time for these to respawn and you don't want that time to be extended see here this one takes four and a half hours to respawn that's already nearly halfway into it you don't want to have that time extended by them just sitting here doing nothing so these two are wasted here someone really should go and clear these tip number 11 is to complete your mini games and i see a lot of people they end up forgetting to do these so every day you should be coming in here and you should be doing your infinity war the rewards for it are great the coins are incredibly worth it for all, pretty much everything here is useful and we go back and we see that there's also the classic Infinity War, that's uh, where you progress through, you should be completing all of these, getting uh, all the stars. You should probably be getting very close, if not completely finished, by the end of Strongest Lord 2, if you're a spender. If you're not a spender, it's probably going to take to about Strongest Lord 3 before you can start completing that. But then down here, we've got another mini game. We've got the Army Assault. And the Army Assault is incredibly easy. You should definitely have that done by the end of Strongest Lord 1. And the, the rewards, again, are great. Um, and you should be doing all of the, the difficulties as well. And just get them all out of the way. Um, they don't restart, they don't um, refresh or anything. Just get them out of the way, get all those bonuses, and be ready to use everything that it gives you for the Strongest Lords. And it's going to give you a great advantage. Now the final tip, and one that you will see all throughout the game, half of your server is probably going to be them, build farms. It's incredibly easy to build farms for this game, it's incredibly fast to build them, unlike Infinite Galaxy where it takes quite a lot of time and effort. Um, in this game you can set them up in a couple hours, and you should be setting a lot of them up. If you plan to be a free to play player, you should be setting as many up as you can. Now there's lots of tools out there that can help you manage these farms. I'm not going to go into them in too much detail for this video, but you, you can look it up and you can find some tips for those, or I'll make a, a video in the future about it. But yeah, get as many that you are able to manage. Personally, I've got uh, four farms set up, but I'm thinking of expanding it to eight. I'm going to double it. Um, and that's even as a spender. I spend a decent amount in this game and I still need the farms because everything becomes extremely expensive. You'll see here I've got premium so I get um, a million off of it and it, it hardly matters for level 20, what is this, 23 upgrade for my castle. It hardly even matters. It costs a lot of resources to do anything once you get past the level 20s. So you need to have plenty of farms ready to supply your main castle. Now along with that farm, a, a bit of a last tip, is have at least one combat farm. That's a battle farm, some people call it. And that's just a regular farm, except it's going up to level 19. And the reason for that is, you don't want to be leaving your alliance with your main castle to go and defend your farms. You want to be using your farms to defend each other. And this combat farm is going to help you uh, against the higher level opponents that are going to come and try and raid you. Um, another thing, of course, is to always clear your farms. Never, never leave a lot of resources in them. Otherwise, other alliances are going to see that and they're going to pounce and steal all those resources. And it's going to make even more drama than those resources are worth. So make sure you clear your farms. So 
I said this was meant to be 12 tips, I think it was actually about 15. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more War and Order content, please do subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. It seriously does help me out, and sorry about that notification there. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day.